welcome to the second episode of my series detailing how to tweak your Mad Max plotting times. In the first episode, I spoke about what I did to take an AMD Ryzen 9 based system to step 20 times, going over operating systems, file systems, all the then available flags for the plotter, and so on and so forth. This time, I'll be focusing on five things RAM overclock, CPU overclock, U value, V value, and the brand new K value. And what way would be better to see the effects of overclocking than with a brand new system? She is a 3960 based system sitting in a ROG Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha motherboard with 128 gigs of DDR4, one Samsung 980 Pro for the OS, two Western Digital SN850s individually formatted in XFS with an HPA for transfer of plots to destination drives, and she's currently housing a GT710 for graphics in order to keep the heat manageable. When running plots, she clocks in at around 500 watts, peaking at around 90 degrees centigrade. And once again, this is with a GT710. And in case you were wondering why I went with a Threadripper based system, it was mainly because of the ridiculous amount of PCIe lanes, as well as the ability to furnish this piece of art with uh, 256 gigs of RAM in the hopes of being able to run tests on RAM only plotting, of course. And I did in fact purchase 256 gigs of RAM, but uh, I have a Corsair IQ AIO installed, which does come with a bracket for the Threadripper, but it actually blocks the fifth or fourth RAM slot, so that means I can only populate four slots, and I'm therefore stuck with 128 gigs of RAM. At least until my mono block arrives next Friday. So, off we go to the good old spreadsheet. I started out with a nice baseline without any kind of overclocking, and I believe that the default for the RAM is 2666 MHz. And it's, um, it's not that bad. Let's see if we can improve that. So starting out with XFS and block size 2048, uh, the first thing I did was I changed CPU to on demand. I know obviously I, I got about two more plots per day there. I then went ahead and overclocked the RAM and got a whooping eight more plots per day. Sadly this was not stable so I went ahead and modified the overclock and yeah, I lost a little bit, but not really that noticeable. After that, I decided to test the K2 value, or rather the K value, and I changed it to 2, and there was no difference really. Um, I went ahead and overclocked the CPU and got one more plot per day. That's uh, something at least. Um, after that, I went ahead and tried changing the block size of the XFS to the maximum that it can handle right now, which is based on the page size, which is 4096. So I modified my XFS partitions to 4096, and I still had U9, V9, as in the previous tests. And I gained about half a plot. Uh, really not any good be chance. I only ran eight tests on these on these first ones. So what I started doing was I started changing the V value because I noticed that my CPU utilization was not at a hundred, not even near a hundred percent. So I modified V and I I immediately saw changes and increases rather Got down to a thousand average or a thousand nine average. I changed the V7 and I'm down below 1000 seconds average already. And this was with U9. So I changed to U8 and I get 973 average. So my plots per day are already 88.74. That's the average. I changed to V8 and it still increases and I changed to V7 
V7 actually ended up being my best one, and you can tell because I have tested it uh, a, a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this average is pre pretty decent. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that should be fairly accurate. So my best time was 902 seconds and 902.496. So two and a half seconds faster and I would have been sub 15. Well, that's my best one anyway. Uh, average was 932. Um, just for, you know, the sake of testing, I tested with K2 and uh, I, I didn't test that many. It, it could have been roughly the same as as with K1. All in all, so no major difference. Uh, I also did test U7 and well, that didn't go too well. So the absolutely biggest change here came from the RAM on the clock, which lowered the time by almost tenfold of what the CPU overclock did making it the second most important tweak only surpassed by the file system of the temporary storage. Now it should be noted that the Ryzen-based CPUs are already operating near full capacity as is, so the CPU overclock may be more noticeable on Intel-based systems. But then again, there are times when Intel-based systems can achieve higher RAM overclocks as well. So a follow-up to these tests may occur with uh, an Intel-based system in the near future if there is an interest. So what about the U, V, and K value? Well, for my system, the K value made no difference. There are some systems where it will make a difference, but on a higher-end system like this, probably not. It's already... It, it actually doesn't mean... It's not a bad thing. It just means that your system is already doing phase two as well as it can. Did the U value have an impact? Yes, a huge one. But I did not see the difference on the 5950, so I do believe that the CPU is responsible for this as the utilization increased when the U value and total de uh, time decreased. The same goes for the V value. Essentially, on the 5950 based plotter, the CPU itself became a bigger bottleneck than the 3960 is here. So until I find and remove the new bottleneck from the 3960 system, I really can't tell how much farther I can push the threader. Right now, it's looking as if the RAM overclock is the second most important factor. But let's be honest here. Both the CPU and RAM are important, and if your CPU utilization is at 100%, you will benefit from a CPU overclock. If you like the content of the channel, please feel free to hit subscribe. I will attempt to post one or two videos each week and next week's episode I will be exploring the realms of cloudy with hard drives instead of NVMEs. Cheers!